in InDesign, regardless of what kind of document you're working on, you might make references to other people's stats and facts and research. And when you make references to that, you have to attribute those references. They're called footnotes. So here in InDesign, if I go to chapter 10, folder three, I have a little text document here for creating footnotes. So I've got a little sample block of text. We'll just pull this back up a little bit. And I'm gonna zoom in and I wanna reference some of the facts that are here. So let's see, since 1984, kinship has helped create family. Okay, that's an intro. Um, let's see, for the first 12 years, okay. For the first 12 years, services were concentrated on the Central Coast. Okay, that makes reference. Let's see, then in response, Kinship opened an office there in 1996. Okay, I want to reference that. They That is a fact that came from their annual report. Okay, so I'm going to take my type tool, click right at the end of that statement, and then I'm going to say type, insert, footnote it makes a little reference to number one and then you come down here number one where did I get that information from the kinship annual report 1996 all right I'm gonna go on and read a little more greater expansion followed Let's see in 2001 they added specialized post adoption services and in 2002 family ties, relative care. Okay, I'm going to click right at the end of that statement. Type, insert a footnote. And there's my number two right there. So that one will be from Kinship Annual Report 2002. Let's do one more. Um, Let's see, this groundbreaking influence has resulted in systematic changes, benefits. Agency has taken a leadership role in child welfare community and its programs have become models throughout the country. We'll click there. Type menu, insert a footnote, and that will be from the OC register. Um, January... 7th, 2010. Good enough. All right, so I got my footnotes right here. If I hit W, you see those tiny little numbers making reference to my footnotes. But let's see what else we can do with our footnotes. So you notice under type, it says we can insert a footnote. You also have document footnote options. So let's see what that is. Okay, this is how you design the look of your footnotes. So I'm gonna turn on preview. And the style of these is just making reference to the first, the second, the third. Well, I could change those to Roman numerals, lowercase Roman numerals. So I'd have I, 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 I. There's my Roman numerals. Um, if people don't speak Roman, just kidding. If they don't know Roman numerals, um, you can do it by asterisks, um, 010203 or A, B, C, and D, like that, A, B, C. You can see what we're changing here, but I think the common one is just by numbering them. Uh, let's see, formatting. The footnote reference number in the text is superscript. It makes the number small and lifts it up. That's called superscript. Much like you get the little TM for trademark on a uh, product name. So we got that superscript. You don't want to do subscript because then it sinks it down below the type and people are not used to that as footnotes. It's usually superscript. You don't want normal. Because then it just says services to 1996 one. No, that's ridiculous. It's superscript. If you had any character styles or paragraph styles saved, you could apply them. We don't have any of that here. And I also want to look at the layout. OK, 
okay, how it's laying out this information. So span the footnotes across the columns. Well, these are pretty short, so I don't need that. Um, the baseline, we'll just leave it at the bottom of our text here. Okay, allow split footnotes. I don't really know what that does, so I'm just gonna leave that on for default. Let's see what this is. Place end of story footnotes at the bottom of the text. I don't want that, because now it looks like I'm underlying the word family, so I will definitely keep that off. Let's see what we got here. Rule. A rule is a line. Put the rule above. So we'll keep that on. If I turn it off, you're just going to have these floating things. So to kind of separate them from the rest of the text, I'll put a rule on. We'll keep it in the first column there. The weight, I can set that to a thicker line just so we can see it more clearly on this demo. Let's go with the two. All right, the color is black. I can change that color to, let's say, red. If I did a thicker line, I could do a double or triple stroke. If I had a double or triple, I would have a gap color in, in that case. All of this lines up on the left side of the column. So I could do a left indent by hitting the up arrow. Just kind of push it over maybe to the type. But then these numbers are just kind of floating out here. So I'll hit the down arrow. Let's see if we can do a negative value. Yes, we can. Okay. So I can do a negative value and kind of push it out into this space. And we'll hit the up arrow. Just push it out a little bit like that. Um, width. Maybe I want it to come across to maybe three inches. So I'll just turn the preview off and on. And there we go. So you can design the layout of these footnotes. Now I don't really see any space here for the actual size of the type. Numbering, start, yeah, I don't see any of that. Uh, if I had a paragraph style, maybe I could apply that, but let's see what we get. If I click inside of a footnote, kinship number one, well, I'm looking around, I can't find the number one anymore. So I'm going to click inside this footnote and then go to type and go to footnote reference. Oh, there it is. Okay, that was it. Got it. Um, when did I quote the Orange County Register? Type, go to footnote reference. Oh, okay, there it is. So now I can read this statement and see if it's really true for that. So that's kind of a nice touch too. Um, Notice here, if I click and drag, it will only do one footnote at a time. They're like divided into their own cells. So if I click outside and hit W, they each have their own cells. If I click, it's still attached to the entire article. I can't pull these cells apart. What I can do though, is when I hit W, I'm gonna take my type tool, click, 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 and let's see if we can just make those smaller. There's the font size. I'll hit the down arrow. Yeah, okay. We make those maybe 10 point. Click, click, click. Make it 10. Click, click, click. Make it 10. There we go. Because we want people to read up here. We don't want them to read down here. Now, the only thing I have a problem with, and I'm not sure how to fix this yet, is the gap between the one and the statement or the one and the reference information. So I wanna see if I can change that. I'll click outside and go to type, document, footnote, options. Turn on my preview. And let's see if there's anything to move my text. So there's the numbering. Uh, I don't really see anything there. Let's go to the layout. Minimum space before the first footnote. Let's highlight that. And let's hit the down arrow. Nope. Hit the up arrow. I don't really see anything happening there. Oh, that was this spacing here. Okay, we don't want that. Because if I made it too high, it actually cut off that word. So let's leave that at zero. Space between footnotes. Let's highlight that and hit the up arrow. Okay. Well, see if I do that, it's going to start cutting off the type. So I don't really want that. But let's say I do. I want a little bit of space between these. Now it's getting too close to that. 
So now I can highlight minimum space before the first footnote and hit the up arrow. See if I can get that. Ah, it's not doing it. Okay, let's hit the down arrow. Let's see if we can go. No, we cannot. All right. So can't really do that. But I can space apart these guys. So let's see what else we have. First baseline. Um, no. Rule above. Allow split footnotes. Numbering and formatting, uh, layout, let's see, left indent, offset. Let's see what the offset does. If I hit the up arrow, okay, that pushes it up. This pushes it down. Well, that's not really what I wanted. But at least I know what these little um, buttons are doing for me. I'm just not seeing where I can move that down. Let's try the first baseline offset to letting highlight this and hit the up arrow no let's hit the down arrow no okay so I'm not getting anything there either I'm sure there's got to be a way to do this I just don't see where it's at so I'll leave that for now um, span across columns don't need that minimum space before okay let's click okay and it might just have to do with the text frame so let's click here, and I'm going to pull the text frame down. There we go. Jeez. If all else fails, do it manually. Okay. <laughs> that was it. That was stupid. So there we go. Got a little more room between that. I can click here. Maybe just fine-tune it up to there. That looks good. I just do it by eye. So that's how you deal with footnotes making references to facts here in InDesign.